Remember Grandpa Jones on Hee Haw? And everybody would ask him, Hey, Grandpa, what's for supper? Well, today we have a boiling pot of Zenith carburetor sautéing in a mix of water and powdered dish soap. So, let's see if it cleans this thing up. And what's cooking today? More carburetor. Follow me on Facebook for more recipes. Continuing on with the Zenith carburetor, as you can see from the photos, I ended up having to drill out the brass plug so that I could um, use the smaller drill and clean out this uh, passageway that's located underneath the ventry. Uh, the instructions said to use a 1 8 inch diameter drill bit to take out this uh, brass plug that was in there and then use a 1 64th drill bit to clean out the passageway. So uh, unfortunately I could not find any plugs uh, locally available to uh, work with this carburetor and the best that I can determine is that it's approximately 5 30 seconds of an inch diameter. So what I'm going to attempt to do is make my own brass plug for this carburetor. I have a piece of 3 30 second brass round stock already chucked up here in the lathe. Uh, unfortunately with its diameter being as small as it is to begin with, my armature chuck is too big and my steady rests that I have are also for larger diameter work. So if this doesn't work I'm going to have to use a regular Jacobs chuck in the tailstock to support the brass as it's being turned. So. Let me get the tooling set up and see if we can take a 32nd of an inch off of this brass and get it set up for this carburetor. Well, I've had to go back to the drawing board and use the regular drill chuck as an armature chuck. I don't like doing it, but it's the best thing I can work out right now. Continuing on with the Zenith carburetor project for the Fordson, I received a new ventry from the Rosewood Machine and Tool Company located at 6423 Kaiser Lake Road in Rosewood, Ohio. They are manufacturing a lot of new parts for the Fordson tractor. And what I found is the ventry that they are manufacturing is what was advertised is the new design or the updated version. You can see it has um, these lines that are milled through it to improve fuel flow through the carburetor and greater throttle response. If you look at the original one, it's flat on the bottom with just a very slight recess machined in it. Uh, so the outer rim is just a little bit higher than the inside rim of this ventry. Of note, this original ventry is significantly heavier 
than this new one, which is made out of aluminum, but the old one is a pot metal type material. But the good thing is, is they have done a fantastic job that this will press in perfectly and all of the dimensions match up exactly. So the folks over at Rosewood really know what they're doing. Um, if you had the time and the tooling, you could make one of these on the lathe at home yourself. But for the price and having a uh, professionally made one shipped to you, uh, you can't beat it. Next thing I'm waiting for is the carburetor uh, gaskets to arrive and then I can start reassembly. We're going to start reassembling this Zenith carburetor for the Fordson tractor. If you recall from the earlier photos, this fuel bowl area was heavily corroded and I started off with using acetone to loosen up the crud that had formed in there over the years and then followed up with soaking and then boiling uh, this carburetor, first soaking in apple cider vinegar and then following up with boiling in a uh, solution to loosen up the remainder of the material. Uh, the jet inside here, as you can see, uh, is now open. It has a free passageway, but I have not removed it because that would become another difficulty to drill, re-thread, and then find a new jet that would fit in there. The brass plug that we had to manufacture and replace went into this port and from the instructions to do a thorough cleaning of this carburetor, you would drill out all of these brass plugs throughout the body of the carburetor and then follow up with either the appropriate sized wire or small drill bit to clean the internal passageways that deliver fuel to the bottom of the ventry area. For reassembly of parts for this bottom portion of the carburetor, it's gonna be relatively simple. All there is on mine is this machine bolt. It goes in through and connects to the linkage that was originally set up for the governor for the application that this carburetor was originally set up for. And as you can see, someone has brazed on the parts to allow it to work with the Fords and governor. It uh, has not interfered with the operation that I can tell, but in our purposes, we will not be using any of this. We're just simply putting the parts back in place. As I had mentioned, the Rosewood Tool Company out of Rosewood, Ohio, manufactures the new ventries, and it's made out of aluminum. So we're just gonna set that into place and press it down so it's in its recess, and then we're finished with this bottom portion. We're now going to focus our attention on the top half of this Zenith carburetor. I want you to take notice that this carburetor, like many of the other vintage Zenith carburetors, has a round metal tag stamped with the part number. In this case, it's 2420. That number correlates to the part number in the advertisement that was posted in the earlier part of this video. On the side casting of this carburetor is the number 31074 and on the opposite side is the letter G as in George and the number 4. As I spoke earlier, 
We tried to maintain as many of the original parts as possible due to the availability and the difficulty in removing some of these parts and the danger that's involved in having to manufacture your own new parts. So that is the reason we only replaced what was absolutely necessary. The carburetor has been cleaned to the best of our ability and all the passageways blown out with compressed air. The next step is we'll reinsert the needle valve and then we'll replace the float. We want to do our best to get this float and the pin lined up to make it go in as easy as possible. So that's been reinstalled. Uh, special note, with this float, we tested it. Uh, it appears to be sealed, that it's not leaking, but it was heavily tarnished and a lot of material was stuck to it from being in that very dirty fuel bowl. We did a very light sanding on it uh, to remove that debris and um, did not want to do very much with it out of fear that uh, we could have um, over cleaned it, uh, rubbed a hole through the, the brass, so we just did a light cleaning on it. The next thing that we're going to do is reinstall the carburetor idling jet assembly. Uh, this jet assembly is part number S is in SAM 1268. A new part is manufactured. You can uh, purchase a, a brand new one through Fordson House but we're going to reuse our old original one. So we're just going to screw that into place, get it fairly snug, finger tight, and then it requires a 5 16 wrench to tighten it. So we're just going to very carefully tighten this in here. We're not going to really crank down on it, but make sure it's nice and snug and be careful not to strip the threads because it's brass going into a cast iron housing. So with that, we've reassembled the upper portion of the carburetor. Our float has been reinstalled with the needle valve and the idling jet assembly. The next part is we will assemble the top and bottom halves together. The next process is to assemble the top and lower half of the carburetor. And in between the two halves is this gasket, part number S is in SAM 1273. It's made available through the Fordson House in Escanaba, Michigan. And as of July 2021, the cost of this gasket was approximately $10 plus shipping. However, this gasket is very well made, die cut, and fits exact to this carburetor. And as you can see, as we nestle it in place, they have done a very fine job at manufacturing this gasket to make available to those who may need it. Now we're going to lift the top half and very gingerly lower it onto the bottom half. And we need to line up all of our bolt holes in the gaskets to make sure that they are correct. Alright, now that the top and lower half are reassembled with the gasket in between, we're going to insert the machine bolts that draw the upper and lower halves together. For this application, I'm going to use a little bit of anti-seize on the threads of each machine bolt just to help ensure that it does not rust fast and stick together and causes problems in the future. You have to take great care into not over tightening either one of these machine bolts and I will show you in a moment why that is so important in this application. So if you're watching this video you know how rare this carburetor is and when you can find it, just how expensive it is to procure. Now I'm just going to snug these up for right now, but what I want to show to you in detail is you can see the casting for this lower half does have a hairline crack through it. 
uh, which goes the whole way through to the thread. So that is most unfortunate. And you can also see that some time ago, uh, the last person who worked on this had broken off the ears on both sides for the front half where the machine bolts would have gone through. And what was done to adapt and make this usable, at least I'm hoping it was usable, is they used a quarter inch bolts with washer, the bolt going down through the top half, a washer to secure and make a larger surface area for the nut to tighten onto. So we'll get this put back together and we'll continue on. All right, we have the upper and lower half reassembled with the hardware in place. As I had mentioned earlier, the ears for these machine bolts were broken off, I'm sure, long ago with this repair of a quarter inch bolt nut and washer used to facilitate a repair. The problem with the casting of this carburetor is it's made out of cast iron. And as you know, cast iron poses its own problems when you're trying to repair it correctly. So if anyone out there has a suggestion on how to build up this area and make a better fix, a better repair, please uh, make a comment in the uh, video link and suggest some ideas for us. One thing while I have the carburetor at this angle I want to point out is, you see this brass screw that's in here? I haven't removed it at the present time. I am awaiting for a brass petcock to arrive to screw in here. When this carburetor came brand new, there was a drain cock that was inserted here so that you could drain the fuel out at least 99%. Uh, and then there's another brass plug at the very bottom that could be removed to drain. My only thoughts is the person removed the original petcock from this area because it w was interfering with this bolt and nut arrangement that was added on for the governor linkage. So what we're gonna do now is the very final step is we're going to reinsert the adjustment screws, the high speed and the low speed. And I know that it was probably most proper to use a light coating of, of oil uh, on these threads, but it, again, I'm gonna use just a little bit of anti-seize, run it in through uh, both openings, at least get a coating on there to uh, help lubricate that surface. Once this is all done, uh, we'll cover up everything that's in brass and we'll paint it black. And the reason for that is everything that I'm seeing on this carburetor is it appeared that it was painted black at one point in time. And I also obtained a new gasket for the manifold. So this will go in between the carburetor and the manifold. And that's part number S is in Sam, one, two, five, six, also available through the Fordson house. And I think this was around $5 plus the shipping. So let's get these uh, adjustment screws put in and we can at least get this part of our project finished up. Now one thing of note, uh, some of the literature that I had posted was from the Fordson F Facebook page, uh, group page. There's a lot of great guys on there uh, from not just the United States, but the United Kingdom and Australia, New Zealand, all over the world. And they are a fantastic resource with helping guys out that's working on one of these tractors that needs some guidance and further information. So if you um, got an old Fordson and you need some help, want to talk to a great group of folks, I would suggest going on to that page and starting there. So I believe this top screw is the low speed jet and the larger one is the high speed, but again, limited information available, and it is most difficult to figure out what is what with the disassembly, the reassembly, and everything else under the sun with these uh, to include 
what they should be set at um, for how many turns open and closed. But we're gonna leave this for right now. I know this video uh, was a little bit longer, but I wanted to show you the process on how I went through to clean it. And um, just make note that I was very fortunate that all of the fuel passageways had come clean except for that one that we had to make the plug for. And the next video is most likely going to be reinstalling this onto the tractor and followed up with a test run later on. So thank you for your time and good luck on your project.